In this video, I wanted to cover some of the more advanced features of SynthSim or SynthSim in VinSim that allow you to probe your dynamical systems model uh, or your system dynamics model uh, with uh, more than just sliders. And so uh, this is our bacterial population model that we've been using in class as kind of a running example. Here's the birth loop, here's the death loop. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen this before, if you look down the left-hand side in VinSim here, there are these document buttons. And if I click document all, it actually shows me in one place all of the equations that I use in the model. So I've got, um, you know, so all the dynamic variables here. So average lifetime, average time until reproduction. Well, there they are, average lifetime, average time until reproduction. I see what those are set to. Um, I see uh, the formula for the stock, which is not one we ever really change, but you can see the initial condition there, one. I can see that uh, births, the births flow, so there's the births flow and the deaths flow. I can see the formulas for those, they're there. The births flow is bacteria divided by average time of reproduction. The deaths is bacteria divided by average lifetime, and there's the units, minutes, minute, bacter, bacters per minute, bacters per minute. And then down here, it even has the kind of internal uh, variables, um, you know, the final time, the initial time, how often it saves, and what the time step is. So if you need to get that all in one place, that's a great play way to do it with the document all. I wouldn't necessarily recommend, uh, you know, pasting this. I mean, you can copy and paste out of this. I wouldn't necessarily recommend pasting this raw into a document that you're going to use as a report, but you could at least maybe start there and then edit these things away, prune off the stuff that you don't need. But that's at least is a little easier um, than going through every equation one by one to sort of seeing what your equations are. All right, but the point of synthesim is that we might want to experiment with changing those parameters without, again, going into the equations and changing them. So I go into synthesim, and then I see that it turns on these uh, behavior views here. So by the way, if I get out of synthesim, if I go into the view menu, you'll see there's this show behavior option. If I do that, anything, any data that's currently loaded, it will then plot in these little thumbnails here. This is even outside of synthesim. So um, if you're wondering how to do that, that's under the view menu, show behavior. And so that's a quick way, even outside of synthesim, to just get a quick snapshot of whatever the currently loaded uh, simulation data is. If I go into synthesim, um, it's now showing me those data that correspond to these slider settings. And so if I slide these sliders around, then I see that the graphs change in these little thumbnails. And so Synthesim allows me to kind of rapidly prototype these values. <clears throat> now the, the thing is that I might not um, be interested in just changing these constant parameters here. Um, by changing their, their constant value, I might actually want them to do, say, a step response. Now, if I right click on these values, then I can now get the option to override the behavior of this element by inserting um, different functions like a step uh, change. So I can say that, well, I know that this value was 0.75 all the time. Well, maybe I want it to be 0.75 um, up until time two, and then at time two, I want it to jump up to four. And so it'll be a step where it'll be constant at 0.75, and then suddenly at time two, it'll jump way up to four. And so bacteria will go from up until time two, their births will be, will take, uh, there'll be shorter time between births than deaths. So we would expect a region of growth up to time two. Well, then after time two, the time between births will be on average longer than the time uh, between death. And then we would, so we would expect a, a, a time of decline there. So if I click OK there, then uh, I can actually graph this, what used to be constant. So I can, click on the, I can click on the constant, click on graph. And as expected, it goes from 0.75, and then at time two, it jumps up to four. And so what happened to the rest of the variables in the system? Well, if I just look at the bacterial stock, as expected, I get um, this, uh, this time of growth up to time two, and then a time of decline. And so if I look at the births flow, so I'll hit, I clicked on births, and now I'm going to click on graph, and then I see that I get rapid lots of births, and then 
um, at time two, there are still a positive number of births, but the number of births is declining over time as the population is declining over time. So if I look at deaths, then I see that, um, that there is a region of where the deaths are increasing over time, and that's just because the population's increasing, and as the population increases, you get more deaths. But then as the population decreases at time two, then you end up seeing that um, the uh, deaths also decrease, but the, these number of deaths are still going to be higher than the number of births. And to sort of show that for sure, um, I might say plot, um, let's see if I can plot two of these at once so that I can get them on top of each other. I don't know if I'm going to be able to easily do that in synth the sim, but. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Yeah, all right. So, so that is uh, an example of how I can introduce a step response. Now I can also generate step responses and other variables at the same time. So the deaths, I say, well, the death, uh, the average time, um, the average lifetime of the bacteria is three. But let's say at some other time, let's say time three, I want the average lifetime of the bacteria to increase to five. And so now we see that the time between births at time two jumps up so that it takes much longer for them uh, to get born. But then at later, um, at this later time, then the average lifetime of the bacteria also increases. So if I look at the net effect on the population, I get a region of growth up until the first step which is this is when it takes them much longer to reproduce, and so then I get a decline. But then suddenly at the second step, where it now takes them, uh, they live longer. They live so much longer that they now, um, the average lifetime is longer than the average time to reproduction. So they have time to reproduce, and then they start growing again. So I get a more complex output here um, that just came from uh, changing these, and so there's the very interesting death function too. So uh, just by putting these step responses in. Now I can go with one of these and I can click on the stop override button and that, that on both of them will then turn uh, their overrides off or um, if uh, one of them is currently being overridden I can go through and, and just turn off that one by unchecking this uh, override normal behavior. Now you may have noticed that there's other functions I could have put in there. So I don't have to use a step. I could also say do a sine wave. And so this sine wave says oscillate between 0 and 4 um, and take the mean of 0 and 4. So the mean of 0 and 4 is 2. That's the average of these two numbers is 2. So take that value until time 0 and then oscillate with period 1. Um, so I'm going to change this to a 1 here. So it should take the or say a 1.5 and so it will take the value 2 up until time 1.5 and then after 1.5 it will then oscillate so I'll get a full sine wave um, every one time unit. Now I might say well what if I want to do 0.5 here? Let's see what that does. So now you can see the average time until reproduction is oscillating and if I graph to take a closer look at that then I can see that it holds time value 2 here up until time 1.5 and then it starts oscillating and it oscillates all the way up to 4 all the way down to 0 and it uh, completes one full oscillation in the period of 0.5 so every 0.5 you get another oscillation and so this is exactly what I wanted now um, imagine how that would affect population if suddenly you got these these changes in the average time into reproduction in this early period uh, the average time to reproduction is less uh, than the average lifetime, so they live long enough to reproduce. But then suddenly at this period here, uh, they are now going to take longer to reproduce than their average lifetime, and so you'd imagine you could get population declines. But then very shortly after that, then they take almost no time to reproduce, and so you'd imagine you're getting massive population increases. And this goes on and on. Like this is like pumping them so that um, you get um, uh, the massive. So population declines, massive growth, declines, growth, declines, growth, and so on. After this initial period, uh, where they um, 
where you end up getting so initial growth and then decline in the growth and so on. So if I look at the bacteria graph here, um, if you look at the units here, they're gigantic, they're billions. And so I can't actually see what's going on down here. I would have to go and uh, graph this in Excel, for example, and to zoom in on this a little bit more or adjust um, the plotting inside VinSim, which I'm not going to go over uh, here today. Um, but uh, you can see that at least there's definitely some interesting behavior happening over here. So at near the end of the simulation, we get this growth and then it looks like it, it uh, tapers off and then a sudden growth there at the end again. And again, the, these, these pulses of growth and then stasis and then growth again come from those oscillations of the average time to reproduction. And so you get a sudden burst of growth when the average time of reproduction drops uh, to very low numbers and then stasis when it rises to high numbers and then a sudden growth again when it uh, rises, uh, when it drops again to low numbers. And so if I were to look at some of the other variables like births here, if I were to graph that, then not surprisingly, um, I do see um, a sudden peak in births followed by a drop off and then a huge peak in births followed by a drop off. And if this simulation were to keep going, I would get more of these oscillations. But if I look at deaths, then it looks slightly different. So in deaths, it looks a little bit more like the normal population. Because deaths isn't changing, the, um, the deaths uh, are related to the population in a kind of proportional way, so it makes sense that the deaths look just like uh, the birth, or just like the population. So again, look at the population, that's what it looks like there. And if I were to, you know, just to plot this constant, of course this constant is the constant across time. Now, uh, the only other thing I'll add is that um, in this model, we don't have any lookup tables. But uh, you can actually, if I did have a lookup table, I could actually override that lookup table um, so, that, uh, so that that lookup table, rather than being a relationship relating one variable to another in this complex function, it could, I could then just sort of replace it with something else. So similarly, if I were to right click on this flow births here, um, I can override the births and I can say even though um, this, so it's a way to kind of short circuit behavior of the system. So down here I've got these interesting oscillations going on. Now if you imagine this is a giant network, I, I might be interested in knowing exactly sort of where these oscillations are having their biggest impact. And so I might want to leave the oscillations turned on, um, but then start uh, sort of turning off their impact on other parts of the network. And so I can right click on this flow and I can override the flow's behavior to say, well, actually the flow I'm going to change to be a um, slider that, uh, that allows me to slide between zero and 10. And so now, even though these oscillations are going up, they're ignored by the flow because the flow is now a constant. And I see that as I change this constant value of the flow, then the bacteria just does this exponential rise. Um, because um, the because the birth rate is constant, and the death rate um, varies by the number of bacteria. And so, um, as the number of bacteria grows, so does the number of deaths, and you eventually reach an equilibrium where the number of deaths, uh, where the outflow of deaths, is going to be equal to this 8.875. So, if I were to um, graph this deaths flow then it should be leveling off close to 8.875, which was exactly what this births flow is. So if I were to move this births flow down and then plot this, uh, this deaths flow, then it will also be equaling out to around 4.375. So this is rising up and trying to get to 4.375. Meanwhile, um, the bacterial population is rising to whatever population, in this case somewhere above 10, um, allows the deaths flow to match the births flow. So all of this crazy stuff going on in average time of reproduction is totally being ignored because I've overrode the ridden the flow here um, with uh, this constant value. But I could also add a step change and I could do all of that same stuff to the flow directly. And I can uncheck that and then we'll go back to that other view. And you can actually do that with any of the dynamic variables. So I can actually override the stock to behave um, you know, like a sine wave or something like that. So now the stock behaves like a sine wave and that allows me to see uh, what happens to 
all these other flows when the stock is forced to be a sine wave. Um, so, which we're seeing here. And then I can cancel that override this way, or I can override everything by just clicking the stop override. Now, you might end up liking one of the graphs that you got out of here and wanting to save it so you can use it later. Well, there is this save this run as button here, or save this run to, and I can then type in, say, sine wave there. And if I'll hit save, um, then now I've saved the data set as sine wave. And so if I were to graph, then you notice it's got two data sets now. It's got the current data set and also the sine wave data set. And so if I were to say, um, go in and uh, change this, uh, you know, turn off this override. Well, now this is my current data set. And so if I move this around, um, you'll notice that the red uh, from the sine wave data set is still showing and there is a slight blue line which current which is my current data set So if I were to graph this thing, I can't see the blue because the red is just so big But if I turn the red off um, Then the blue in theory um, Could be seen but I'd have to zoom in on it in order to see what's going on because again the axis is all screwed up Because of that sine wave, but if I exit synthesim, so I'm gonna hit stop setup to exit synthesim here um, I can load so I can go into control panel and make sure that sine wave is loaded and maybe I'll unload current for the moment so that now only sine wave is loaded. And if I go to view behavior, then I see that my so that sine wave behavior is loaded back again. And in fact, even this, which is a constant, if I were to click, uh, click on it and then click graph, I end up seeing that sine wave. So even though in the model it's a constant, it actually has data saved for it that is non-constant, that is this sine wave here. So um, I can pull that data up you know, whenever I want, and I can then end up graphing these things um, and then you know, making use of those graphs later. So, um, and that's what I'm seeing, all the data from that sim there. I can go back and, uh, and let's say I'll unload the sine wave and I'll reload current. And it's just telling me that it's reloaded current. And so now I can see that the, the behavior is re restored. And uh, again, if you didn't see that before, you can do view show behavior even without synthesim, and it'll show you those previews. But I could have just graphed as well. Okay, so that is how you use the override features in synthesim to uh, update any of your dynamic variables in an ad hoc way so that you have the ability to probe how your system is really working and sort of what components are most important um, without having to manually go in and put in formulas for each one of these or even rebuild your system. If I wanted to override this stock to be an arbitrary, you know, dynamical, uh, or an arbitrary function like a sine wave, um, I would um, actually, without being able to override it, I'd actually have to replace it with a, you know, a totally different variable that wouldn't act like a stock. And so I'd have to make a major change to my diagram in order to investigate this um, hypothetical scenario that the stock behaved in a particular way. But synthsim or synthsim or however you pronounce it. Um, allows me to temporarily hack in to any dynamical variable and change how they work. Um, and, then, um, and then when I stop the sim, it just goes back to normal. So it's a great way to play with uh, your models to, um, to figure out how they work and, um, and sort of what uh, component, what parts of them are sort of most important or to sort of to, to tease out uh, you know, you know, values for parameters that are particularly critical in some in some way. All right, I hope that was helpful.